Hi, welcome to another edition of Aspiral CPA. Uh, today we're talking about tax filing deadlines. I have uh, Yahweh here with me again. So Yahweh, how was your uh, trip in at minus 30 today? Oh, uh, so bad. <laughs> I'm just lucky to get to carpool with someone. <laughs> Excellent. So the, uh, the quote that I have here today is uh, from uh, Jim Collins, you know, author of uh, Good to Great, one of my favorite books, is you must maintain unwavering faith that you can and will prevail in the end, regardless of the difficulties, and, and here's the big one, and at the same time, have the discipline to confront the most brutal facts of your current reality, whatever they may be. So the statistic is, you know, 50% of all businesses are out of business in five years, and 29% of them, uh, of those failed ones, are out of business because they ran out of cash. Um, so the the story is we have business owners and their, you know, proverbial head in the sand, they're, they're short on cash, and they think that, you know, delaying filing their taxes, you know, to deal with constrained cash flow will end up, you know, making their cash flow better when really it's going to actually make it worse. Um, so it's, you know, it's really uh, becomes to be a problem. They're, they're avoiding filing their taxes. So Yahweh, what do you think are the questions that these business owners should be asking? Okay. Um, well, first of all, what are the penalties filing personal and corporate tax late for one time and multiple times. So it starts out the, let's start with the one time. So if you're late filing your you know, personal or corporate taxes, it's it's 5% of the balance owing plus 1% a month, okay? Um, so it's 5% of the balance owing plus 1% a month. Um, then if you're late multiple times, so the second time, so you're late, and let's say you haven't filed for two years now, so now the first time is going to be that 5%, year one is going to be 5% a month for a number of months. And the second time, even though this is your first time filing because you're two years behind, your second year two then is going to be penalized at 10% of the balance owing plus 2% per month for every month until you file. So it starts to add up in a real hurry. So, Okay. Um, what is the interest charge on the outstanding balances? The interest, which is in addition to the penalty, so they're going to charge you interest... Uh, recently went up from 5% to 6% here. Um, so the interest they're going to charge you on the outstanding balance is 6% a year. Um, that's the, that's uh, the interest rate right now. It does change from time to time, usually kind of in conjunction with as prime rate rises. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's 6% currently. Okay. Um, why should you file on time even if you don't have the money to pay? So here's the thing. You're you're, you're going to pay the interest no matter what. The interest isn't from the date of filing. The interest is from the date you should have paid the taxes to begin with. So put that out of your consideration. The, the, you're going to pay the same amount of interest. But you can completely avoid the filing penalty by filing on time. So even if you don't have the money to pay, you can file. They're going to start calculating the interest, which they would do retroactively anyways. It's not going to change the amount of interest but it can completely eliminate the penalty. So you don't have the money to file, you don't have the money to pay, so you file, you you're, have the same interest anyways, but you've completely avoided the penalty, which mm -hmm. often can be substantially more than the interest. Even just the penalties, 5% right away, right from day one. It's not 5% over the year, it's 5% overnight as soon as you're late, whereas the rate of interest is 6% over the full course of the year, that's right. Um, you know, or you know, filing late the second time is ten percent plus two percent every month. It, those rates are astronomical, right? So, mm -hmm. um, you know, even if you don't have the money, file, get rid of those penalties. Those are the significant balances, and, and just realize that that interest is the same whether I file late or not. So, right. Um, well, personal taxes. Uh, what are the two dates that personal taxes are normally required to be filed by? So normally, if you're going to file your personal taxes, most everybody has an April 30th deadline, except people with an unincorporated business, they ought to file by June 15th. So if yourself or your spouse has an unincorporated business, uh, you can actually wait until June 15th to file. Um, the start charging interest from the tax at April 30th regardless, but you, you're not subject to any penalties if you have an unincorporated business. Uh, which you file on your personal tax return on June 15th. So April 30th for most people. So if you have a corporation, April 30th for if you have an unincorporated, if you're April 30th, if you have a corporation or if you're a regular taxpayer and June 15th, if you have a proprietorship unincorporated business. Okay. Um, how can the proprietorship filing deadline be a planning opportunity? Well, sometimes the, the, the threshold for having a proprietorship is quite low. I mean, did I shovel the driveway this year? 
um, <laughs> and earn 50 bucks at it. Um, is that a proprietorship? You know, how significant is this penalty? Did we have any revenue that flew in out after? And we can get into a little bit of a gray area, but you know, it, it you know, it, it's not the significance that changes the deadline from April 30th to June 15th. Is is did you meet the minimal threshold? You know, were you conducting a business for profit and loss? Did you have any revenue from this thing? Um, so sometimes getting into that June 15th filing deadline is maybe a little easier mm -hmm. than people think. Okay. Um, when is the deadline for filing corporate taxes? So your corporate taxes are due six months after your year end. So if you have a December year end, your corporate taxes are due June 30th. If you have a January uh, year end, your corporate taxes are due July 31st. If you have a February year end, your corporate taxes are due August 31st. So it's always six months after uh, the year end. Um, you know, the, the, the interest on the taxes starts to accrue at three months, usually on corporate taxes, you have to pay in monthly installments anyways, but anything in addition to those monthly installments, the interest uh, the interest tax on at three months. But again, the interest is small, the penalties are big. Um, if you've never filed before, how can the right year end date reduce penalties? So if you have a corporation, you know, some people come to us and say they're, they're, uh, you know, they're 20 months into their business. Mm -hmm. But let's say the first, you know, 10 months, there was no profits. So we know we're late. We're going to have to file one year late, but we haven't set a year end date yet because you set your year end. Some people think that their year end set when they incorporate or when they call up and get that GST number the first time. That's not true. So your year end is set when you file your first corporate tax return. So if you haven't filed yet, and this is your first time around, you know, we can look at what was the period that you didn't make any money. And we make that your year end number one because then we're the penalty is going to be based on the balance owing. So if you didn't make any money, it's you know it's it can be ten, five percent of zero. It's still zero, right? Um, so lots of times you can strategize you know when you reach profitability in picking that year end to kind of eliminate any penalties that, are, that are, would otherwise be due. Okay. Um, what are the GST filing deadlines and how does it relate to the corporate deadline? Oh my goodness. So this is my uh, pet peeve. If someone is out there with the federal government right now, and if you're listening to this, you know, your corporate taxes are due six months after your year end. If you are a small business corporation, you have less than $1.5 million in revenue, you're able to be an annual filer for GST. But someone in their infinite wisdom at CRA has said that even though you can file your corporation, uh, six months after the the end of the fiscal year. Some reason you have to file your GST return three months after the year end, but it's impossible to file your GST return without doing pretty much the same work that you have to do to file your corporate year end. So, uh, and there's a whole team of people and thousands, you know, millions of tax dollars that go into calling business owners up after you know, three months and five days to wonder why they're not done their GST return. Well, they, they haven't had to file their, their corporate tax return for you know, until six months. So if someone's out there some way and wants to make an unlimited a whole bunch of waste in our federal government and CRA, and this is my chance to rant on this topic, is make those deadlines align. You should have to file your GST uh, year end and your corporate tax year end at the same time if you're a small business corporation with less than $1.5 million and end a rant right there. Mm -hmm. um. <laughs> What is voluntary disclosure and how can this be used to reduce penalties? Okay, so you're offside, you know you're offside, but CRA doesn't know yet. Mm -hmm. And I mean they don't know, they haven't sent you a letter, because if they've sent you a letter or you know they've requested that you file, it's too late. But they don't know and you do, and you're worried that they're gonna find out. So there's something called voluntary disclosure that we can often use to you know say that, hey look, it's, you know, we're wrong, we're late here, mm -hmm. uh, but we're coming to you rather than you coming to us. So would you, you know, please accept this and uh, you know, we'll, we'll pay the interest. You're always gonna have to pay the interest. Don't try to get around that by delaying. You're always gonna pay the interest, but we're coming to you uh, before you found out. So can you get rid of the penalties? And again, those penalties are often bigger than the interest. So that's the key. You're gonna pay the same interest regardless if you file the day after, you know, within one day or 10 years late, you're gonna pay the same amount of interest. The only thing you can affect is the penalties. So, and often with voluntary disclosure, if it's a filing that, uh, you know, they're not chasing you for yet and you're willing to come clean on, we can get rid of those penalties by filing under the voluntary disclosure program. Okay. Um, what sort of payment plans can be made for GST, personal and corporate 
arrears. Okay, so uh, GST is a little trickier because they view GST as a trust account. It wasn't your money to begin with. You know, you had to collect an extra 5% over and above uh, what you're, you normally charge the customer. Um, you know, of course, you get to deduct any, any GST that you spent in, deli in delivering that product or service, but um, you know, ultimately they view it as a trust account. So the default for them is three months. They say it's a trust account. You know, you can get longer payment terms, but uh, you're going to have to jump through some hoops to get any longer than three months, and that can be an uphill battle to get any payment plan for longer than three months. When it comes to personal or corporate arrears, generally we can get six months, and generally we can get six months without too many hoops. Um, you know that deadline's always changing. I don't make the policies at CRA, but you know, getting a, a payment plan of six months on their pers for arrears personal tax or or arrears corporate tax, you know, six months is, is generally uh, easy enough to, uh, to get uh, because they, they have a little more flexibility because they realize that people don't always truly understand their, their personal tax and corporate tax liability because it's based on income and they're not sure how much income they should have had uh, until the end of the year. Whereas opposed to GST, they know you've been collecting more of that balance each and every, more than what you charge for your product or service on each and every transaction. So. Uh, they think that you should have that money to side, but personal and corporate taxes, um, they, they take it a little bit lighter. Um, and I, I don't want anyone to think they take it lightly, but generally we can get six months of a payment plan. We can always get longer. Um, I shouldn't say always. There, there, there's always the potential to get longer, but it can be an uphill battle and there's some generally some hoops that you're going to have to jump through and, and you know, real significant disclosure, turning all of your bank statements over business and personal. Uh, to uh, you know, try to get longer payment terms, um, but it, it can be done. So there is a light at the end of the tunnel. And, you know, the most important message is to know is that you start making it better as soon as you, as soon as you file. You never filing does not affect the amount of interest you pay. The amount of interest you pay in the end is always going to be the same. Just the quicker you file, the less penalties you're going to pay, and those penalties are are usually more significant than the interest. And sometimes you can get completely out of them. Uh, just by filing on time or filing before uh, they come looking for you. Mm -hmm. So I think that's uh, what we have here today. You know, thanks again for joining us. You know, please hit that uh, like and subscribe button uh, so we can continue to give you tips on um, you know how to beat the odds of business. And uh, as always, if you have any questions, put them in the comments below, and we'll address them in future videos. Thanks very much.